Hello, Slicey Dicers. This is Brian with another knife review for you. Today we have the Spyderco Dragonfly 2 Warncliffe. This is one of the newer versions of the Dragonfly. There is also an Emerson Wave uh, version. Um, I'm not too interested in that, but I was very interested in this one. I used to have another Dragonfly. I had the Vitoku Sandwich Steel uh, Blade version, but uh, it was a sprint run, and as I usually do with sprint runs, you know, it, it was worth it just to sell it and move it along, so I did that. But I have been keeping my eye out for another another dragonfly that I would like to carry, because there's a lot of things I like about the dragonfly that we will get to as we go on here. But uh, luckily, Smoky Mountain Knife Works was nice enough to uh, send this along to me with some other budget knives and stuff. So uh, very happy to get my hands on this one. Thank you very much to them. There will be a link down below uh, to where you can purchase one from them if you would like to do that. It is VG10 steel, which I've often bashed on Spyderco's VG10 before. I, I don't think it's the best VG10 in the world. Uh, it is just the usual uh, fancy plastic FRN handles. But uh, on this knife, I, I don't mind it as much. It, it is not inexpensive though. $61.75 for a small little plastic handle knife like this. You can still call it a budget knife, but uh, it's, uh, it's, it's quite a bit for what it is. And we'll talk about that more in the, uh, in the conclusion. But for a lot of reasons, on a knife this small, Spider Coast VG10 doesn't bother me as much as it does on some of the larger ones. So let's get a let's get going more on, on individual things about this. Let's do some stats and size comparisons and all those fun things. We have, as you can see, pretty small. These are one inch squares. Overall length of 5.6 inches, blade length of 2.3 inches, blade thickness very very thin, 0 0.09 inches. Handle thickness of 0 0.36 inches and super light at just 1.18 ounces according to my scale. So very, very, very light little knife. Size comparisons. It's going to be a bit silly because I don't have a lot of knives this small currently laying around. So we're just going to use the usuals at first here. This is your Spyderco Paramilitary 2 and the Para 3. Well, get them on camera there. That'd be good. As you can see, uh, it's quite a bit smaller than either of those. Um, and then we're just going to do one other little quick one here. Oh, I do have one other small knife here. This is one that you guys probably haven't seen that much, but uh, I do like a lot. And that will be a review coming up this week is the uh, American Buffalo Knife and Tool Grunt. It is pretty, pretty similar in overall length to that. This is a much beefier, bulkier knife than that. And, oh, we'll just grab one other kind of three-inch knife, the... This is the Civivi Duras. You see, it's a pretty small little knife. It's meant to be kind of like a little fifth pocket, secondary sort of knife. I do like the look of it when it's uh, when it's open, especially, I think, in the Warncliffe. I think it just looks a little meaner, and, and I, I don't know if I like it better than the standard Dragonfly, but, <clears throat> excuse me, my throat's terrible today, but it, it does look, uh, I don't know, I like it. It looks a little meaner. Kind of like it. This is the uh, Japanese FRN. They do a pretty good job. As always, I always say I, I like the wire clip and I like that it lands on the on the logo instead of landing on this multi-directional stuff so it slides in out of the pocket a lot easier. Very, very smart thing that Spyderco does that a few other companies do, but I don't understand why everybody doesn't do it. It seems pretty smart to me. But I do like the overall look of it, for sure. Um, as far as this blade goes, uh, I, it's really really useful. I've been carrying this since I got it like a week ago as my secondary pretty much every day. It's just been living in the pocket of my jeans and I find it to be extremely useful. I like Warncliffe's. I like them especially for your usual EDC task, cutting open packages, you know, uh, little fine detail stuff that we all wind up doing every day. You know, you get an Amazon package, you don't want to slice four inches deep into it. They work really good for that. Cutting tags off of stuff, things like that. It works really, really, really well for that. I like the ways that you can grip it. This is kind of merging into the ergonomics also, but since we're talking about the blade, I like you can use it, you know, just like a little, almost like a little exacto knife. Razor, razor, razor sharp out of the box. It was about uh, 20, 21 thousandths behind the edge. I do believe, if I remember correctly, that might be just a little bit thicker behind the edge than uh, the Vitoku one I got was, but it still slices like a laser. That really thin blade stock, as I said, super sharp out of the box. No complaints there. As I've said before, I find Spyderco's VG10 to be a little on the softish side as far as edge retention goes. But I will say, on a knife this small, it doesn't matter. That's perfectly fine. 
it's VG10 is pretty good as far as corrosion resistance and stuff. So I think for a knife like this, uh, that's not going to be a big deal to you all the time. It's not a knife that's going to get it put through a lot of hole, a lot of heavy use. You can just remember you have to strop it up when you get home. And good, good shot is, uh, yeah, you get this very easy to do that. Super easy just to slap it on a Spyderco sharp maker if it gets a little bad or even just drop it and it'll be perfectly fine. I do wish there was a sharpening choil on it. There is not, but that you can say that about almost all the Spydercos. But uh, yeah, it's a, it's not a, not a, it's a, it's a pretty good little blade. It's very useful. I, I'm not going to say it's like the, the best, coolest, most all around great blade in the world, but for its purpose, it's extremely useful. I think more useful than the regular blade. I really do. And, uh, yeah, tip is not, not, not robust at all or anything like that. This isn't meant to be a heavy duty knife and it, it isn't. Ergonomically, all the stuff I liked about the original are still here. This, it's, fits for a knife this small. It's meant to be used choked up. I mean, yeah, you can hold it like that, but I don't know why you would. It works infinitely better choked up. That's why it's got this 50-50 choil up front and all this nice jimping and all that stuff. And it works extremely well like this. Very comfortable. Very easy to use, despite the small and the thin handle and the small handle. It just works really well. Now, yeah, you can feel that clip, obviously, but it's not like a hot spot or anything because the spring clips kind of just bend out of the way. I I really like using it. Very comfortable in the hand for the size that it is, and it ain't going nowhere. With that multi-directional FRN and all this jimping and just the way the handle is shaped. Yeah, it ain't going nowhere for sure. Uh, as far as the carry goes, uh, it's, it's quite tall. <laughs> I will say that. Uh, yeah, it's a good inch and a half tall. Let's pull it out. Uh, where did they set it? Yeah. Compared to a paramilitary two in height, I guess we want to put them this way. <clears throat> yeah, it's only a, a little bit less than a PM2. So, it is quite tall for, for the size of knife that it is. We'll pull out yield wranglers and uh, do some more with this. But if you're putting it in your regular pocket, which is not where I carry it, which is we'll get to in a moment, you have, as you can see, it's even catching there because it's so tall. Yeah, it's, it's pretty tall. I mean, you can still get your hand by it perfectly fine. It's a small knife, but it feels like, I'm like, I have three and a half inch knives that I can get my hand by easier than this. Uh, it is thin, so it does just kind of move out of the way, but then you rub it on the FRN and all that stuff. Um, I never carry it like this. For me, and what I think I said in the previous review, if I did not before, it is one of the best fifth pocket knives though. Because this pocket, I don't care that it's tall. I'm not gonna put anything else in that pocket. I've never used this pocket in my jeans for anything other than knives. I don't carry old timey watches. I know they call it a coin pocket. I can't get coins out of this. It's a, I tried that like once in my entire life and it, I've, it was not effective, so I don't do it. So I think just carrying it in this fifth pocket and just kind of forgetting that it's there, which at this weight, you totally can. Great, it's, it's really good. As I said, it slides in and out easy, which is nice. I I do I do really enjoy it as a fifth pocket knife. And in the fifth pocket, I don't care about that height. If you're gonna carry it as a primary knife, like in your normal right or left side pocket, which you can switch, it is right or left, um, then you might care about that a little bit more. Uh, I don't, it doesn't really bother me. I think that the height is worth the Warncliffe blade shape because I really am a Warney fan. I do like them. Um, as far as deployment goes, it's your typical Spyderco back lock. Of, you know, you're cut and paste your comments about the uh, the Endura, the Delica, the Indela now. You know, it's, you can one hand open and close it. It's broken in really well. I haven't done anything to this yet. I haven't taken it apart or anything. It did come well oiled because as you can see, I'm carrying this thing for a week and it's still leaking a little bit out there. But, um... Yeah, it's just, it's fine. I will say the thumb hole is a little sharp. I was surprised. I don't remember my old Dragonfly being like that. And I don't remember any of my Endura or Delicas being that sharp. It feels almost like the some of the Taiwan ones are this sharp. It's a bit sharp. I may take a, a ceramic rod to that and, you know, uh, smooth it out a little bit. But, um, yeah, it's... It's just what you expect. It's not mind-blowing. 
but it's fine. Uh, what is my conclusion on this? I, I really like it. I really sincerely hope, I know this is a production model. They are going to keep making it. I do know that for sure, but I also hope they do some spreads in this. I would love to see an S30V version of this, um, the Vitoku, whatever, um, because the sprints on all these FRM models, they don't charge a whole lot extra for. And 6175 is a, a bit dear for this, for the VG10 version. But an S30V one for 65, uh, Vitoku for somewhere around there, you know, I would, I'd jump on it. It would be great. I would, I'd love to have one like that. Um, I saw somebody's doing a sprint run of the Delica and Crewware. Oh my God, this and Crewware, that, that Warney Blade and Crewware. Shut up and take my money. I would love it. But this one is this one's okay. Sixty one seventy five. I guess it's all it's a it's all right. It, I'm not saying it's like a rip off or anything, but it is in that price range. You can get some really really cool stuff if if you want to spend sixty one seventy five. You just have to really like dragonflies, and a lot of people really do. There's definitely a market for it. I definitely do not blame Spiderco for jumping on it and making it with the warning. But uh, yeah. If you really like dragonflies, this is a good one to add to the collection. I, I like the Warren Cliff blade better than the standard one on a knife this size. So, hope you guys have enjoyed this. I've been Brian. Have a good one.